Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage and welcome to John Wick Hex. Uh, John Wick Hex, if you haven't heard of it, it's a bit of a strange game. It's the latest game from Mike Biffle. It is... I've heard it described as a, as a turn-based strategy, but I think it's a, a better description would probably be a pausable real-time puzzle strategy. It's kind of a mish mishmash of genres, really. I've... Uh, I, I'm sure that there are other games similar uh, mechanically, but I'm, I'm struggling to think any off the top of my head. But it is quite a sort of mishmash of genres, and it is quite interesting. One thing I am going to say straight off the bat with this game is that um, it is made by a very small team. It is a relatively low-budget game. Uh... I mean, it's quite inexpensive. I hadn't, I hadn't even heard this game was a thing until it randomly popped up on the Epic Games Store around about the same time that um, uh, John Wick 3 hit the cinemas. And uh, the game takes place before the three John Wick movies, so it doesn't really, you know, it's got its own story that's independent of the movies. It doesn't really spoil the movies or, or anything like that. Uh, and I actually picked this up in this um, Epic sale for like five dollars it was three pound something in the uk which is a very very low cost and uh, considering this game you know obviously it has the john wick license it has the voice talents of uh, ian mcshane from the movie it has the voice talents of lance riddick from the movie uh, it also has um of every video game you've ever heard of fame troy baker doing the voice for hex who's the, the bad guy in this game uh so you know there's a lot of high profile vocal talent in there and um you know a fairly valuable game license but the actual game itself is relatively low budget so i have noticed quite a lot of jank with the animation and some clipping and stuff like that the game is very stylized in terms of the art anyway which you will get to see uh, there are some cut scenes they're like sort of um comic books in between the chapters which are fully voiced so i'll let you hear the first one of those i'm not really sure that this is going to turn into a let's play because i don't know if this is the right kind of game that i like to play on the channel so this is going to be more like a bit of a mini re review and a sort of a first look a hands-on first impression so uh, i'm gonna go in and start a new game i've played fairly uh lengthily through into the campaign but we are going to start again uh, before we do anything else if we just have a quick look at the settings there isn't really much here accessibility is pretty much um, show the tutorial or turn the subtitles on or off uh audio like you expect really you've just got some volume sliders for the individual aspects and then visuals is pretty much full screen bloom motion blur and choosing the resolution that is it and you will understand why once you get into the game so i'm going to go ahead and start a new game like i said there will be a cutscene, so i'll let you listen through that we've got two um difficulty modes we can select from operator is the way that the game is designed to be played now like i said it is a real-time pausable game so with the expedited difficulty you only actually have five seconds so when the game pauses because you don't pause it manually it pauses at specific points when things happen you only have five seconds to make your next decision or you're essentially kind of skipping a turn but i'll explain all that as we go through we're going to go in on operator which is the way it's meant to be played and here we go Quite the imposition, is he not? Surely you must have known our disappearance would not go unnoticed. Oh, sure. I assume your high table would try. Put up a contract, send someone sniffing around. I didn't think they dispatched the devil. I presume our present location is not on any maps. None. Nobody knows about this place. That's probably why your friend started searching at Edgar Wu's place in Chinatown. Mr. Wu is in your employ? He was. He ran everything south of 14. Made no secret of our relationship. Oh. He was proud of it. I honestly believed that Hex, you, were a fiction. A myth to keep the stuff alive. I worked hard on that. Staying out of sight. Until you decided to kidnap us. Yeah, until then. You have a higher purpose. 
purpose. And that purpose requires certain theatrics. I always did enjoy a little theater. So here we are in John Wick Hex. This is basically the way gameplay looks. We are in a sort of a 3D isometric viewpoint. We can scroll the camera around. We can rotate with Q and E. We can also zoom in and out. Uh, and this is my first gripe. So there are two ways you can zoom in and out in this game. Uh, you can do it using the mouse wheel or you can use it with R and F. Now this is the maximum that you can zoom in. Uh, and this is the maximum you can zoom out. So zooming out lets you see a good portion of the map, and it's pretty much top down. Pressing R till you zoom all the way in gets you not quite at a 45 degree angle. It's probably more around sort of 65, something like that. You do often find that there are obstructions and you can't always see what's going on. Some of the buildings do get in the way. Uh, but the biggest gripe is the actual scroll with the mouse wheel. If I use my mouse wheel, I mean, this is a gaming mouse. The scroll wheel action on this mouse is pretty fast. I have to move this wheel a lot to zoom in. If I want to go fully in now, I'm going to use full finger rolls from the base of the wheel to the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 rolls of the wheel to go from one extent of the zoom to another. That is absolutely ridiculous, which makes the mouse wheel zoom completely useless. So, how does John Wick Hex work? Well, here we are with John Wick, the man himself. He is the only character that we play as and control in this game, so you just have a, a single entity. Uh, this is the map. There are various different maps as you progress through the game. You can see most maps usually have an end point marker. There's the one that we need to reach on this particular map. Now, you'll see a lot of the map is sort of just... Um, like this dark grey colour with outlines, that means that we don't have a line of sight on it. Uh, the area that is currently sort of cell shaded in, in this colour, that is the area that we can see. These white dots on the floor represent spaces that we can move to. It is a sort of a hex grid system, you just can't really see it because you only see the snap points. And as you can see as I'm moving the mouse around over these points, it is giving us the ability to move and at the same time if you look at the top of the screen along here you can see that we actually have this timeline and as I extend the mouse between these different move nodes you will see that it increases the amount of time it takes to move that's because it takes 0.4 seconds to move one tile then obviously 0.8 for a second 1.2 for a third and so on now at the moment the only timeline is John's because he's the only character on the screen. So let's go ahead and tell him to move around this corner. This is as far as we can move because it's as far as we can see. So currently the game is paused. Let's right click to move here. So as we round this corner we actually spot an enemy. Now that automatically pauses the um, game for us. We're not quite on our move spot at the moment. We are heading there. We can see this little purple indicator which is showing us why the game has paused because we see somebody in front of us. Now from what I can tell the enemies can't actually see behind them although there isn't really an easy way to see what their field of vision is. Now if you look at the top of the screen where the uh, timeline is you'll actually see that John's timeline has run out here because he's been he's been interrupted anyway and this timeline below is the uh, this guy's timeline this is a security guard and he has a gun we can tell that just by mousing over him and if we left click on him we'll get a little bit more information but that's not too important right now but what we can see is that this guy is currently in the process of guarding and he's going to do that for 1.4 seconds what we're going to do is we're actually going to move up a little bit closer behind him now we can see he's still guarding because he, he doesn't know we are here. So because we're right behind him, we, we could shoot him if we wanted to, but ammo is very, very sparse in John Wick Hex. Down here at the bottom, you can see that we have our custom handgun that we start with. We have uh, 15 rounds and we have one spare magazine. So we've only got 30 rounds. Now, there aren't really ammo pickups in this game. So just like in the movies, uh, the only way that John can really get an ammo reload is to pick up somebody else's gun. And you can do that. And there are different types of guns that have different accuracies, carry different amounts of ammo, and um, take different lengths of time to fire. 
because we want to conserve our ammunition, we're going to go and left click on this guy and we have some options. Now, these are pretty much the only options you ever have in this game. You've got the option to strike, which is a relatively quick melee hit. It will do some damage to their health, but more often than not, it does um, focus damage focus as you can see at the bottom here because john has 10 focus focus is your ability it's, it's like your mana essentially you can use it to do certain abilities and moves and it also makes you harder to hit the more focused you are the more difficult it is for you to hit so striking somebody reduces their focus as well as their health uh, you have the ability to push somebody it does a little bit of damage but it's fairly quick but it does allow you to kind of move from one tile to another it's good for repositioning while attacking somebody at the same time then we've got a takedown takedown does quite a bit of damage it's a good way to take somebody out um, the downside is it does take quite a long time to pull off if our target was attacking us, we'd have the option to parry, but he's not attacking. Then we've got the option to shoot, which with John is usually a double tap. And we can even throw our gun. Probably don't want to do that unless it's empty, but it is useful all the same. We do have another option, which is to change our stance, which lets us go into a crouch. If we go into a crouch, we don't have the ability to melee attack anymore. We can still shoot with increased accuracy, and it also allows us to do a handy little roll to get out of harm's way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mouse over takedown and if you look at the top of the screen where the timeline is you'll see that two bars uh, two sections of a bar have appeared on John's timeline. You've got the 0.6 second grey action, which is in preparing to do the takedown. And then you've got the actual takedown itself, which takes another 1.4 seconds. So overall, this action takes two seconds. Now, in that first 0.6 seconds, it is still possible to be interrupted. Once that pink 1.4 second section starts, then the takedown will happen. But it also leaves John exposed for that period of time. Now, if you actually look at the guard's timeline, the guard is guarding for another 1.3 seconds, which means the takedown will start before he's finished his current action. So he cannot interrupt it. Somebody else could, but what we're going to do is we are going to select takedown, and then we have to pick where we want to take the guard down. Now, what you can actually see is that, that it is highlighting these different areas on the grid. So this is where we will end up standing once the move is finished so we want to stay at the back so we're going to take him down to this destination so we'll take him down down he goes and we are on the spot we selected he's dropped his gun but we're not going to pick that up and as you can see the game pauses so let's go ahead and move around the corner so there's not much going on on this map it is basically a sort of a, a tutorial map you do tend to meet the enemies one at a time uh, the number of enemies that you meet tends to be the same but the order and type that you get does seem a little bit random on some missions so that can mess things up for you as well you'll also notice you get these doors with this little pink outline now these doors actually are spawn points and there is a little bit of uh, clown closet thing going on with this game where sometimes you get an almost never-ending number of bad guys coming out of the door and you never really realize how many you're going to get uh, we've also used one focus here because we use that for our takedown now you can actually recover focus by hitting the refocus button it does take a couple of seconds because you're basically standing there for what it says 1.1 seconds so that's 1.1 seconds where you're basically standing there trying to shake it off um, you also have the ability to bandage you start with two again your health your ammunition and everything is persistent uh, between locations it does get recharged between chapters uh, so it's very very careful it's very very important to be careful with your health and ammunition because you're going to be carrying it through from location to location so we've got this guy over here again this is another security guard and he has a gun now he's currently moving but he's only going to be doing that for another 0.1 seconds i better try and shoot him as quickly as possible i've got a 90 percent chance to hit him and my shot is going to take 0 0.9 seconds to wind up and then there'll be two 0 0.3 second shoot actions. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, it did pause just there, but you can see that he, the guard was about to take a shoot action. This was his shoot action right here. So he spotted me, but luckily John looks just a little bit faster and we get our shot off just before he does. So that stops him from being able to shoot. And again, the game pauses. So let's continue to move forwards. Uh, 
So we can now see that we've got somebody spawning. Spawning takes quite a decent amount of time. If we want to go ahead and change our stance, that only takes 0.5 seconds. So we are now crouching. Crouching doesn't cost anything apart from the time that it takes to crouch. Uh, we have the ability to roll. Now, rolling's relatively quick, but it does use focus. However, it greatly increases our shot accuracy. We've got a 100% chance. We'll take the shots again on this guy. As you can see, he had a little pink bit appear on his action bar there because he was about to take a shot, but he didn't get the opportunity. Now, I don't want to waste focus on a combat roll, so I'm going to go ahead and stand back up and we'll start moving in this direction and again we have seen another enemy now what we could do here is actually move out of line of sight and force that enemy to come and find us now there are still a couple of weird issues that i've noticed uh, in this game uh, particularly that while line of sight blocks the ability for an enemy to take a shot at you i have been shot through cover before because they've taken a shot i've moved out of the way during the shot uh, but it has still managed to land. Now, it's, quite, it's relatively easy when you're only dealing with one bad guy at a time, but when you're dealing with multiple enemies, you have this issue where you really have to plan what you're going to do, and there will be times where the enemy's just going to attack before you can do anything. And the only option you really have is to either take the damage or try and move, which can decrease their chance of hitting you. So we're going to go ahead and use the wait button, which is down here in the bottom right hand corner. And what that essentially does is just skips 0.2 seconds of time. And, you know, it can be useful if you're waiting for somebody to come towards you. It's a little bit strange because even though we don't have a line of sight on this enemy and we can't see their timeline, we can still see where they are, which is a little bit weird. So they're going to come around this corner. There they are. We're nice and close to them. Let's go ahead and take the shot. There's the double tap. Now, it would have been a double tap, but they did exactly what I just spoke about. They moved around the corner. So our second shot got interrupted because they broke line of sight. So we're going to move forwards and we will take the second shot. Doesn't end up being a double tap because it only needed one shot to hit them. So there we go. They are down. We'll continue to move forwards all the way to the exit and we are out. And then you get a little rundown at the end, shows you how much health you remained with. Um, I think your focus automatically recharges anyway, and it shows you your ammo. Now, one thing that I do like in this game is at the end of a mission, at the end of a map, you can actually watch a real-time replay. It's quite cool, but this is really where you start to see the jank with the graphics and with the animation. But let's go through and actually have a little look at this one. It's one of the slightly better takedowns. And some of the double taps do look quite impressive, but as you can see, the camera work is very janky. A uh, little animation glitch there. And you do get quite a lot of, of clipping. You know, some of the ragdoll effects are a little bit weird, but considering the time of the team, the size of the team and the budget for this game, you can't really complain that much. And for the cost as well. I mean, it is a relatively inexpensive game for what it is. So in between um, locations, you get this little map um, and you basically just follow the path around. Sometimes you do get multiple choices of where to go. Um, but you basically follow the map around and it gives you a little bit of information about them And there's usually a boss at the end. Sometimes there's a boss like in the middle and then there's an escape um, But let's basically work our way through here. So in between chapters. So each map is a chapter uh, Sorry, each um, of those big maps is a chapter made up of individual locations in between chapters you get another cutscene uh, you also get the option to uh, spend some of your coins to basically place additional bandages and additional weapons and ammo uh, around different locations. And uh, you also can spend some of those coins to basically increase John's stats in the sense of making his um, abilities use less focus or making certain actions faster and things like that. So we've got this person here who is guarding for 9.9 .9 seconds. Now, they are unarmed, but I'm just going to go ahead and take the shots here because I, you know, I do know that there is another bad guy on, on the map very close because, like I said, I've done this before. So as I start to move forward, you can see we do end up spotting that person there. Now, they haven't spotted us yet. They're still in the middle of a move cycle. We've only got a 60% chance to, sh um, to hit them with a shot here. Let's go ahead and change our stance. Now, they are still moving. We are crouching at this point, and our shot now has an 80% accuracy. 
Now, unfortunately, there's, they've just moved out of our line of sight. I don't really want to roll, so I'm going to let them move a little bit closer to me. He's back into my line of sight now, and we've got a 100% chance with the shot this time. Now, again, annoyingly, he's just moved out of the way. Um, I will wait and let him come back to me, because he will. There he is. And we'll take another shot. And there we go. He is down. Now, at the end of each chapter, you do actually get rated on how fast you complete um, the chapter. And it's not in real time. It's how long you've taken in game time. So if you spend a lot of time waiting for enemies to come to you, or you spend a lot of time backtracking backwards and forwards on the map, then you will not get as high a score as you would do if you just basically YOLO'd your way through. So we've got another bad guy here. Uh, they're armed, so let's take them out as quickly as we can. Uh, generally in this game, it's a, rel it's a good idea to try and take out armed mobs first, because they can usually hit you from quite a distance away. Now, I've only got three rounds left in John's gun, but I really don't want to throw it away, because his custom handgun is like one of the very best weapons. There's a spare bandage over here that we can go and pick up. So we've spotted another guy here. Let's go ahead and take the shots. And we actually missed with one of our shots. That was uh, unfortunate. Now, as you can see, this guy's about to shoot. He's got fairly long wind-up time, and it's going to take him 1.4 seconds to shoot. Within that time, we can actually get a shot off before he does. If you look at the timeline, you can see John's timeline is always at the top. Our shot will happen just before his, which means we get the shot there. We're out of ammo. We're going to go ahead and reload. That, again, takes a few seconds. And we've got an enemy coming towards us here. Let's go ahead and change our stance. Again, that takes time, so the enemy gets closer. And we'll hit the wait button a couple of times until they come around the corner. I'm not trying to ace this, so I'm not too bothered about the time. But there is our enemy. 80% chance to hit. And again, he moved around the corner out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and change stance. I was going to try and move closer towards him, but he's come back towards me. We will take a shot again. And we hit with one of them. That's fine. Okay, so, can we see any more enemies around? Not at the moment. Let's go ahead and grab the spare bandage. We haven't taken any damage yet, but we'll definitely pick up the bandages. Now, sometimes you will find that the exit to a map is locked if there are still enemies around. So, you do often need to clear the map first. And as you can see, we have one right there. He's moving. I don't think he spotted us. Let's go and crouch. And again, we'll take a double tap. Now... Here's where we have a problem. We've now got this person that came around the corner. They are about to fire at us. And even if I was to take a shot at them, their shot's going to happen first. So this person is going to hit me if I try and shoot them. Their shot will go off first. So my other options are to try and get out of the way. Um, I can't roll in this direction. So let's go ahead and roll over here. It will cost me to focus. And the roll will happen before their shot. Now, I did take the hit, unfortunately. There's not a lot that I can do about that. But I'm going to continue the roll. And then I'm going to shoot at them from behind. So we took a little bit of damage there. That was unfortunate. So the roll doesn't always work. It does more often than not. But that is the map cleared. And again, we can go ahead and watch the replay. And you see the, the jank of the animation here. And strange ragdoll effects. Again, though, like I said, considering the size of the team and the budget for the game, um, you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm really enjoying the game. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it does have the potential of getting repetitive. Sometimes you do get screwed over by the enemy variety. and the, like, That guy's just freaking out there. Uh, you do sometimes get screwed over by the enemy variety when you walk into a room and it's just full of armed um, assailants and you can't really get out of the way. So there definitely are some issues that, that could do with being resolved. Incidentally, if you saw on the title screen, it actually said that this is version 0 0.92, but this is the release version. I didn't get a pre-access, you know, an early access copy of this. This is me basically playing the, the released version after release day that I bought with my own money. So a little bit strange. It might just be that they didn't update the revision number or it may be that this isn't quite version 1. I don't really know. Let's continue through relatively quickly and just see if we can get the rest of this map done. I can show you one of the boss fights. So like I said, this will be a little bit of a longer video. Hopefully I can get through without making too much of a um, mess of things. Unpleasant, if I recall correctly. Who among our kind are innocent? 
We are murderers, thieves, and worse. Speak for yourself. We live by a code. There are rules. True. For those without the vision to transcend them. Now, I wouldn't normally shoot uh, a brawler, but I figured that I only had six rounds in my gun. I was going to go and pick this gun up anyway, because it had more rounds in it. So I thought, well, I might as well just shoot the guy before throwing my gun away. So you'll also notice that there are doors that you can open. Sometimes you can actually go around and open other doors as well. So we could, for example, go and take a look around here. There's a door on the opposite side. We can go in through either of the doors. But let's go ahead and open this door. Instantly we see um, three people. Two of them have got guns. So we've got three timelines here. This one's a brawler. He is not my problem. So let's go ahead and try and move out of the way. And we're going to change stance. And we're going to sort of force them to come towards us a little bit if we can. Wasting some time here. Yeah, now this is a guard. 100% chance to hit with the gun. So we got one shot off there, but they have backed off. Right, okay, let's try that again. There's the shot. We've got another bad guy. And this one's actually flanked around behind us. Now, both of these guys are brawlers. Now, unfortunately, we're crouched. And that causes us a problem because we can't melee while we're crouched. But we can roll out of the way. And our roll will be faster than the strike. So let's go ahead and roll over here. Now, we are potentially going to be interrupted. If I change my stance, I'll stand up before his strike happens. I'd sooner just roll right out of the way. It's using me a lot of focus because I was like sort of in his zone of control. But that's fine. Now I can stand up. And I can take him down. And I can take down and go over in this direction. And then hopefully I can... Well, I can't take this guy down because I don't have enough focus. But I can strike him. My strike was fairly quick. That takes... Knocks him out a little bit. We've got a guy with a gun over here coming in. Let's take the shot at him first. Now, we did take a hit there, unfortunately. This guy's got back up. He's going to try and stri uh, strike us again. We can try and parry it. Whatever we do here, his strike is going to happen first, unfortunately. So, there isn't an awful lot that we can do. So, let's just go and strike him. Right. Now, we're taking a lot of damage now. Our health is getting low. So let's go ahead and get around the corner, if we can. We definitely want to take out the guy shooting at us first, really. Now then, can we actually get you down first with a strike? Just. Okay, we are definitely got a bandage. Because we've only got two health left. We'll move here, and we'll pick up our own gun, because it does have four rounds in it. The one that we're currently holding is empty. And then we can refocus... And we'll refocus again, get it up to full. And then we'll go over here and pick this gun up. Okay, we've got somebody else. They're not on. They are a brawler. So let's just let them come to us. And we will take him down. And we'll take him down to this spot. Now, there is somebody else in there. I can't see if they're armed or not. I would like to pick up this gun. This is a brawler, so I'm quite happy to spend the time picking up the gun. Let's move towards them. Now, we're actually showing that we've got somebody behind us here. Uh, no, in this direction. This is an armed guard. Let's back off a little bit because I don't think he's really seen us. So let's wait. Let that brawler get a little bit closer. And we'll do a takedown. Now, there's the arm guard. Now, that arm guard is going to shoot. I might just be able to get out of the way. Now, they did miss. That's good. But as you can see, the trail of that bullet has gone right through the cover. So, they could have easily, just as easily still hit me. I'll go ahead now and take the shot. So, only a 60% chance. Uh, we did, unfortunately, miss. There we go. You are now down. Um, hopefully, we have finished... Um, with the closet clowns. No, we haven't. There's another one coming from behind us. Let's uh, move over here. Change our stance. And we'll wait because they are going to move towards us. It is someone who's armed. 80% chance to hit with the gun. There we go. Got six rounds left. So there isn't an awful lot of point picking up another weapon at this stage. 
Now, where's the map marker? Is it still locked? Uh, we've got a guy over here. 100% chance with a shot. Oh, we've got another one right here as well. You came out of nowhere. Now, can we get a shot on you? No, we can't. So our options here really are to try and get out of the way. So we did get out of the way. We have got another guy coming towards us. That's fine. Let's continue with this move. Uh, let's take the shot at this guy. Or woman, actually, in this case. Uh, we'll change our stance to crouch so that we can definitely have uh, the aim advantage on this guy. So he's moved away. We're going to stand back up and take a shot. I was gambling on the 90% chance, but it worked. We're out of ammo, so we definitely need to pick up a gun. And we've got another one coming. See, this is what I was meaning about these um, clown closets. You know, the enemies just keep coming. And the exit is now unlocked, which means that all of the bad guys are cleared. I'm not going to watch the replay for that one because it'll take ages. And this video is already getting quite long. So let's go into the next area. So we start instantly behind this guy. Let's go ahead and do a takedown. Move him in this direction. So he is down. We'll stick with the weapon that we currently have. We are going to edge forwards. Now then, we've got a spare bandage there. And that's where we need to get to. It's a relatively small map, this one. Uh, we have a brawler. That's fine. Like I said, sometimes it works out because you do tend to get quite a lot of the easier enemies to deal with. Now, because I was dealing with that guy, this guy's going to be able to shoot me for... Now, I could throw my gun at him. Throwing my gun at him would be faster. So if I throw my gun, now he's stunned. Now I can move closer to him and I can actually take him down. Take him down into this direction, which puts me on top of the gun. Pick the gun back up. So there are some nice little combos that you can do. Got another brawler here. Quite happy to try and just take the guy down. Saving the ammo where we can. Got a guy coming out here. That was quite obvious because the door opened. So the opening doors is the telegraph that an enemy has just come onto the map. 80% um, chance to shoot that guy. Let's take it. Not sure if that was the guy that came out of that door though. No, it wasn't. It was this guy. But that's fine. We can take him down in this direction. Now, let's just have a little refocus there while his leg is doing something very strange. And we've got another guy coming in through this door. We do have a 100% chance to shoot on the spawn. It was a brawler, but I just thought we'd get that done and out of the way. Let's go here and pick up the spare bandage. And then over here, oh, we've got a, another gunman, but we can take him out. Very low on ammunition now, so let's go and pick this gun up here. And that looks like we can reach the end of the level now. No, we've got another enemy. And we've got an, yet another one behind us. Let's change stance, go into a crouch. We've actually got two here. So, right, okay, you've dodged into cover. So let's wait until we can see either of them. Hopefully we won't need to try and shoot at both of them at the same time. Right, one down. Now, unfortunately, this guy's going to get a shot off. I'm going to try a roll. See, he actually missed because of the roll. That was That's the point of the roll. It, it makes you harder to hit. And there is the shot. Again, very low on ammunition now. So I am didn't want to roll there. Let's stand up. I'm going to go and get this gun. It's got 10 rounds in it. Hopefully that's going to be the last enemy on the map. Looks like it might be. Let's just refocus. And in we go. That's the area complete. And we've got one more place to get to. And then there is the, the boss room. Who made a last stand on sea ground? Safe. Nowhere in this city is safe. My people lack the protections and grand illusions of the high table. Nothing is sacred. We live outside the pageantry. Currency. So, John does basically have a, um, like a 360 degree vision. We're not going to be able to shoot that guy before he shoots us. But let's just take him out if we can. 
This guy's now going to be a problem. I'm going to take some hits here. It's unavoidable. So I'm just going to shoot people and then bandage. It's probably the best way of doing it. Now, you're probably the one we should take down first. Now, there, there is no friendly fire. So bad guys won't shoot each other. And there's no possibility that missing a target will hit another target. If you miss your target, you miss your target. That bullet's not going to go anywhere else. There we go. Very low on health now. I haven't got chance to bandage if i get hit here i'm actually dead i'm amazed that i did that and i screwed it up <laughs> so you can actually die let's retry that i think i did go in a little bit gung-ho there even for um even for john wick i didn't play that to the best of my ability there's a brawler quite happy for that brawler to come towards me we do have a guy with a gun here so let's take him out first Let's have that brawler come to us, if possible. I mean, we could just shoot him if we really wanted to. Uh, get a little bit closer, fella. We'll take you down in this direction. Now, we can see that we've got some other guys. We've got this one above us. Who I don't think we can... Oh, we might actually have a shot. There we go. Actually got you. Can't see where the other one is. Now, we're low on ammo, so I'm just going to go back around here and pick this gun up. Now, the first boss in this game, I actually find they were quite easy to deal with. It doesn't mean they all are. Okay, not seeing anybody else at the moment. We do know there are multiple bad guys on the on the map. And again, there are these spawning doors. So there's one. We've got you up there. Only a 40% chance to hit. So I'm just going to change my stance. Can't actually see you now. But I do believe that he is going to move closer to me. Yeah, he's moving down the stairs. Again, I am just, like, advancing time, and this 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 is kind of messing up my score, but that's not what I'm going for here, so take the shot. There's actually another guy there, and he did get to shoot first, unfortunately. So we'll change our stance. Okay, we've got the, uh, the clown doors opening again. It's just a brawler. Has amazingly managed to get out of my line of sight. Just can't hit them. There we go. Let's just finish you off. And uh, we'll pick up the uh, automatic with um, 10 rounds. I will rebandage before moving on to the next level. So uh, spare, out, uh, spare magazines and bandages don't persist between chapters. So there's not really much point in saving anything. Now, we only had a 60% chance to hit that guy. We did miss with one of the shots, but because he got closer to us, we did actually... Uh, it increased our chance to hit him. So that did actually work in our favour. Uh, can we get into that room? I don't think we can, because I would quite like to have the, the weapon. Oh, there is, there is this one over here we can grab. Good. Let's pick that up. Um... There is an enemy nearby, which is this guy. We did miss the shot there. Let's just wait and see if he gives us an angle. He's coming back. There we go. Missed with the first shot, but hit with the second. So let's rebandage just to make sure we're at full health. And we'll go ahead and get out of here. Okay, so that is the last area before the boss. Game has very graciously given us a spare bandage right at the beginning, along with a brawler. So we can deal with that brawler nice and easily. Okay, we've got an enemy behind us. Didn't see what type of enemy it was. Let's just change stance. It is someone who's armed. Now, they are going to shoot me first. They are faster. So let's go ahead and roll out of the way. Now they can't see me. So now we wait for them. And there they are. And now we get the drop on them with shooting them. Unfortunately, they did get out of the way. But they have taken a shot. They're going to move closer to us. And we'll take another shot. Excellent. Now that's good for me because that actually gives me more ammunition. So let's pick that up. We will go ahead and grab the spare bandage. Now, I'm trying to remember where the boss is... 
This is a brawler. So just wait here. I'm going to take him down back in this direction. That's not the boss. But I'm going to try and move out of the way. Now again, here's that issue. He took 0 0.4 seconds to shoot, and I took 0 0.4 seconds to move out of the way. He shot me, but if you actually follow the trail of the bullet, which is very difficult to see, uh, the trail of the bullet's actually going through the door frame. So he can't even see me, but he still managed to hit me. This is one of the things that does annoy me about this game. So he can't even see me right now. But he was still able to shoot me. That was an unfortunate miss. We've got another brawler coming in behind us. Uh, a shot will hit first. Now then, we do have a brawler right behind us. We could try and parry this. And it was a double hit. They are stunned. So let's just go for the strike. And they're not out yet. So let's go for another strike. Now they're down. So we'll refocus. Move over here. Pick up the weapon with more ammo. Is that the last one? Right, here's the boss. Boss is in this room here. So you can always tell the bosses because they basically have this weird symbol above their head. Uh, they're named mob. And they also have a lot more health and focus. So most of the mobs we've been dealing with only had like 2 or 3 health, 2 or 3 focus. This guy's got 10, 10. Now... The only trying to hit these guys with the gun is incredibly difficult because they don't take an awful lot of damage when being shot. Um, that's because they're hard to hit because they have high focus. So what you want to try and do is get their focus down first. That's the important thing. Important thing is to get their focus down. So we want him to come towards us basically. He doesn't seem to be playing ball with that one. We can take a shot at him. Now, he's taking a shot back. He did miss. Let's move out of the way. We want to try and coax him towards us if we can. Let's do a quick bandage while he's moving. And there we go. He, did, he does get closer. Now, we've got another guy com coming in, I think. No, we haven't. It's just him. We can get out of the way before he shoots us. He's just taking quite some time to shoot. So, what we really want to do with this guy is get into melee range. And we want to try and use strikes wherever we can. Now, I was a little bit slow. I'm going to parry. And what I'm going to try and do now is keep striking him. So my strikes are fast. And my strikes will basically take down his focus. And they will stun him before he has a chance. See, the stun lasts much longer than it takes me to do a strike. Um, so you can get his focus down pretty quickly. Now, not all of the bosses are this easy. I'll be honest. You know, this, this guy's fairly easy. Now that's it, his focus is now gone. So if I start shooting at him, we do a lot of damage to him. He's going to try and move. I can probably strike him again just to give him the stun and shoot again. Now I think the only reason this boss is easy is because he's in a room on his own. When you're dealing with bosses where you've got three or four other mobs that you have to fight at the same time, or even worse, when you're dealing with a boss and you've got enemies coming out of clown closets, that makes it more difficult. And there we go, the boss is down. And that's the area complete. So you get this little thing at the end that basically tells you how long you took. It gives you a part time, basically. So uh, it took us 35 minutes of play, uh, but you're not really scored on that. It doesn't matter how long you paused for. Uh, but what you can see here is how long it took us in game time. So all in all, it took us five minutes, and the part time is three minutes and 25 seconds. Um, there are um, like different names you can get for... Uh, shot accuracy, which I, I got on my previous attempt. I think I had 92% accuracy on my previous go. How far you traveled, weapon types you used, and so on. So I did skip the cutscene uh, between the last chapter and this one because I didn't want to spoil too much of it. Uh, but I just basically wanted to show you what I'm, I meant about the coins. So as you go into chapters from chapter 2 onwards, uh, you start with a, an amount of these coins that you can use. Unspent coins are not saved, so you may as well spend them all before you go in. You get given these coins before going into each uh, each chapter. Uh, you can either use them for your best boat tailoring. So as you can see, I've got some options here. We can either increase the range of our push attack by two spaces. Uh, 
Uh, we can increase the moving penalty on incoming attacks. So basically, uh, if we're moving while being shot at, the enemies are less likely to hit. And we can actually have our dodge cost one less focus point, but we can't afford all of them. We can only afford, well, two of those at most. The other option is, you see all these different places that we have to go to. So there's the side entrance. So we've got what a side, above, VIP, uh, that's the boss, and then exit and exit. And what you can do is you can click on one of these uh, locations and you can say stash a weapon here or stash some bandages here. Stash a weapon here and stash some bandages here. Some of them are listed as expensive stashes because they're in very dangerous areas. It's difficult for your operatives to get in ahead of you and actually stash the things in advance. But then the other place, there are other places like the boss levels where stashes are just completely unavailable. But it does mean that you can set up things along the way. It's a little bit tricky if you've never done the level before because you don't necessarily know what you're going to expect. But I think if you're replaying the game, then you've got the option to kind of go through and, and sort of pre-plan mostly for those people that want to you know do the part times for all of the levels i'm not sure how much replayability there is it's not a particularly long game as it is but what i've shown you in the first chapter is pretty much all there is to do that's the entirety of the game's mechanics really there are some different types of weapons that you can pick up like revolvers and rifles and shotguns and such but they all pretty much work in the same way they'll have different amounts of ammunition they'll do different types of damage or different amounts of damage and they will take longer or they'll be quicker to fire depending on the type of weapon but again mechanically it is still all the same that said it's a relatively inexpensive game if you like john wick if you like puzzle games if you like turn-based stuff i definitely recommend trying it out it is an epic game store exclusive which i know is going to be a turn off for some people let's be honest it is the elephant in the room um but i think for what i i paid for the game how much i picked it up for not a problem at all uh, i have been enjoying it if it is something that you would like to see more of please let me know and i'll probably do a few more videos and do a few more chapters but this has been john wick hex i've been unstable voltage thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next video until then goodbye for now